So I have one word for you. Oh. Met hemoglobinibia. Did I did I say it? No, I think I said it wrong. You're <laughs> asking the wrong this guy. The word, this is the word that we went back and forth yeah, on yeah, for yeah. like five minutes last time. Met hemoglobinemia. Globo globinemia. Was it met? He, it'd be like hemoglobin and then anemia and then met at the beginning. Was it just met at the beginning? Met hemoglobin hemoglobinemia. Met hemoglobinemia. That, that, that is the one I couldn't. <laughs> met hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is not. Yeah. You, you, I think you did get it right. Yeah. Are, are there any other words like that this season that are tripping you up? Um, no, I haven't. I actually haven't had too many. Too many. Uh, it's individual words. In this next episode, I say, um, I got to say, um, Closed mid shaft tibia fracture. I've opened up two large bore IVs of L no. I, I've started two large bore IVs of LR wide open and started, and then I haven't. I haven't. I haven't finished the work. It's it's when you got to go through a whole string. It's not that the words are hard. It's you're saying numbers and measurements or doses, and it, it all just gets mixed up. Is there anything Vanagon. you learned while working on season one that kind of helped you out? Maybe like tricks or shortcuts to getting some of that stuff right? Um, if you know what you're talking about, it, it helps. Like instead of just memorize, look it up, what does it do? And then you can, you know, you can kind of start attaching, um, you know, watch videos on YouTube and you can, and when, when you understand what that is that you're doing, um, obviously, two large bore I IVs are fine, but like LR, I don't, you know, like you got to look, okay, LR is okay, so, and then w wide open because he needs a lot of it, you know, and because he's very hurt and whatever else. I and love so, coming here because I learn new things. Yeah, and so I still don't know what the LR is. <laughs> too large, too large IV, too, too large bore needle, too large bore. Large bores of IV, LR wide open. I think that's what Meanwhile, you'll do it in the episode and I'll watch out for it. It'll be perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be, yeah. I get there eventually. So, what was your reaction when you first heard you were getting a season two? Because I remember Gabe telling us that it was kind of up in the air with getting the pickup for season one. Yeah, it was, um, I mean, obviously it was great. It was, you know, it, it was one that we were looking. We would have, I would have been, I mean, crazier things have happened, obviously, in this business, so it wouldn't have been totally shocking, but it certainly would have been, given our numbers and, and how the audience responded to us and kind of what we brought in, um, and being where we were in terms of uh, bringing in for NBC, and given their other slate of shows and kind of where we fell. Uh, amongst that, it, it would have been a, more of a surprise if they hadn't picked us up. Um, and so while you can't, you know, you're not counting your chickens before they hatch, it was one of those things you're still over the moon about. And uh, when we got 14 episodes, that was, that was a nice little, you know, chunk because it, uh, as well. And then when they moved us to mid-season, that's one where, you know, we're kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, getting closer to, I guess, being a fall show. And I'm not sure how much that, it, it meant a lot to me at first when we shot the pilot, but if you can find success during the summer or as a mid-season or as a show that, you know, TV's kind of changing in, in that regard. And so obviously, um, you know, you still want that 22 order episode and, you know, be a fall show and, and be great. But I'm kind of, we, we, as long as we just get to keep doing it and, and working and being kind of successful at it, obviously, and finding enough audience members to, um, to enjoy the show, I kind of, as, as excited as you can get about it, that's, that's beyond my control. So well, being up to the voice is obviously a great time slot. It, that is. it adds a little pressure to us, obviously, because you, you want to maintain the you know, a lot of that audience or as much as you can and, and we're going to, they've given us um, a huge boost in that respect and so we have to live up to that. But, you know, if, if you want to, you know, we, we want to make and we think we do have a really great show and, and one of the better ones on, on network television. So, 
you got to learn to swim with the sharks and you got it. So you got to, you know, kind of get thrown in the deep end and, and see if your show can cut it. And, you know, we think we can, but at the same time, when you do that, there's a little bit of a risk because of the competition and everything else. So at this point, is it more of doing the same and what worked or is there anything about uh, maybe even just having more episodes or how people responded to season one that you switched up? Yeah, you always ask, what do we expect in season two? And it's like, well, the kind of the same thing as season one, because it worked. Um, you know, I mean, that, that's, you, you, you fiddle around with a few relationships and you, you want to, uh, you know, the medical stories are always going to be there. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and so that's obviously a no-brainer. I think what made our show work was the relationships. And so you want to, you want to um, maintain the relationships that worked. And, and because we only did eight seasons in our first episode, there's still so much there to explore. So you want to do that, but you also want to kind of turn some of them on their heads. You know, Ragosa's obviously got a whole new... Uh, Based on what I saw, that should be fun. Yeah, situation to be dealing with. Um, you know, TC's and Jordan's, uh, um, their relationship, um, the dynamics of that change as well, and, and, and mine do. And so you, you do more of the same, but you just do it... Um, you know, you, you just kind of explore relationships and parts of those relationships that, that, that you haven't before. But I think that's what keeps people coming back. And where is Drew right now with his training? He's a third year resident? Yes. So how well, no, 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 no. We're, I'm still second because uh, season two takes place about only about eight weeks after season one ends. Um, there's about a two month, we, you know, you can probably extend it to three, but only about a two or three month um, uh, space in between there so still second year second year um resident at, because you know if if, if we want to go for seven years <laughs> you know what I mean? we, we we have to kind of sense. you kind of people leaving and you know what i mean and obviously i owe the military um 10 years of service after i'm done so that's what I was thinking with the year gap. I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. Up? So, so it's not. We're not going to be doing. Not everyone is going to after each season. I mean, if we ever get, you know, obviously the third season is is next on the agenda. But even before that is having a successful second one once once it airs. But we, I don't think we can jump ahead a full year every year because um, you, you do want the you know us to still be learning and and. Um, and working our way towards something because once you kind of arrive there, there's not going to be a lot of places for the show to go. How about the army training training missions? Are we going to get any more of those? Um, I think in two oh nine we is it two nine or two oh ten or two ten uh, we get to see Drew kind of in action again. I haven't read it, but I've been told of some things, and so um, if those come to if those kind of come to fruition, uh, it's going to be a pretty cool little two or three episode story arc for, for my, for Drew. I'd be looking forward to that. Yeah. Do you think something like that would create even more tension between Rick and Drew? Um, it's certainly going to, it's not going to create more tension, uh, because I know kind of where the, the, the storyline goes. It's going to, um, it's going to make one of us kind of realize what exactly is going on and and it's and and to realize what we what we have what we what we had and what we have and then what we want um and whether that's different or the same um <clears throat> you know we'll see how we'll see how it plays out but th there is going to be uh, a situation with my character that um is going to um kind of bring a, a finality as to where Drew and, and Rick end up. I liked how they approached it in the few episodes they showed us, because it felt very real to me, the idea of, you know, wanting to stand by your loved one through everything, but at the same time being like, you know, in a way, that guy's a total downer to be around, and it's yeah. like, you know. And it, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of work to take care of a sick, uh, to t take care of, like, um, a loved one who's sick. Um, and I'm terrible at it. I mean, when my, when my wife is sick... I'm a, uh, I'm just like get better already, you know. Like you know, she's very wonderful to me when I'm sick, and me, I'm just like, can you just get better? Like this is caught, like this is much more work, um, and and so you know, I, I always just those 
you know, those kind of heartbreaking stories of, of when um, my parents aren't there yet, but, but when you see, you know, I got some, some older aunts and uncles and, and obviously my grandparents, just when, and other friends' stories of, you know, when you start falling to, you know, there's Alzheimer's and dementia and, and not, you know, remembering, you know, who they are, who their children are and, and, and having, trying to balance of taking care of your parents or, you know, your husband, you know, or, or wife, um, you know, and some, cause some tragic accident happened. It's, it's, it's just, a, it puts a lot of stress and a lot of pressure on you. And it's the other person dealing with the tragedy, but you, you get hit with a lot of it as well, just in a different way. And there's that, there's that kind of, I don't know if guilt is the right word that comes along with it, where you feel put out knowing though that, that it's the other person who's suffering, but yet you feel some sort of indignation that like, this is just too much, I can't do this anymore and I don't want to, but that makes me feel like a horrible person, so I should, but now I'm just getting resentful that I have to, you know, and so you deal with all these things. And, and so, it, you know, it comes down to, you know, love is an action. It's not a feeling. It's just something that you do and that you choose to do. Um, ultimately and and so I think that's what Drew is struggling with Rick like can I do this for him do I want to do this for him do I love him enough to do it um and and just you know sometimes it's just the odd you know you just bicker and you fight and you get on each other's nerves when you're when you're a couple that's, that just happens as well so we're going to see how far that kind of goes no proper transition for this one, but I wanted to ask, oh, fair enough. are you going to come back for Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Because I saw that you were in that right after I was here last time, so uh, I was looking for you the entire time. Um, I, no, I don't think, I have no idea. That was one, that was just an interesting little, they had to do some reshoots, and um, there was a scene or two that I was going to be in, and, and I had auditioned for it, it as um, speaking role and stuff like that and then when I arrived uh, th they had different plans when I arrived on set so it just turned out to be that um, obviously I'd love to be a part of it but uh, I feel like you're prime for like superhero type stuff you do the MMA you, yeah. you actually have an MMA movie coming out I feel like I watched something from it the, yeah well there there's one I don't know if it's coming out there's one that we shot that he, uh, the director is still trying to find distribution for and so and it's, it's a good little movie I mean it's it's um yeah, it's called Only I, um, and it's a great little movie. Where, where you know, we'll, we'll, and I'm proud of it. But yeah, you just never know with this business why things get picked up, why they don't, who's going to cast you in your next role. It's all a little bit, you know, right, right place, right time. And then hopefully something like this gives you the exposure so that you, you know, that that luck comes around a, l a little more often.